make sure that they're getting all of that. And then out there on the habitat, you'll notice some remnants of romaine. So they get anywhere, depending upon like Bolingo, he's gonna get about 50 pounds of vegetation throughout the day. And that's gonna consist of the romaine, iceberg, kale. They get a variety of vegetables, so tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, celery was today, cauliflower. They really like um, potatoes, all those sort of things. And then when we are doing those more enhanced training medical uh, behaviors that I mentioned to you, like the stethoscope and the cardiac ultrasound, that is when we incorporate more of what we consider like a treat. So that's going to be your apples, your oranges, your pineapples, things like that, that are really, really going to let that animal know and you're reinforcing them for participating in those behaviors because having them actively involved in their healthcare and their welfare is really, really important. So it's pretty amazing that we are able to do um, condition injection, so any sort of vaccine that they might have needed, but particularly for what we call uh, more involved uh, kind of processes or uh, sedation. Most of the stuff we're able to do right here in their area but on occasion, the veterinarians do routine physicals. And in that case, we would need to have them sedated and travel to the animal care center. And that is where we have them present. <laughs> that is where we have them present that body part. So that was a little bit of that chest beat. But again, you can see it was pretty dainty and not very loud. Because if he was to get any sort of sound on that, Bolingo is going to take that more as a threat to his dominance. And you might see more of that involvement on his part. So. But lingos, chest beats are going to be really, really loud oh, and a little, bit, right again, a little you know. bit softer. <laughs> going back to relationship, so Bolingo is a little bit closer uh, to his son Oliver here for whatever reason. So you'll see them interacting with a lot. He's always generally in between him and Enzi too. So Enzi has a pretty good relationship with him as well, but not as confident. So you'll see normally Enzi lingering a little bit further back. But the other thing you'll notice is we do try to do a lot of uh, feeding and reinforcement with all three of them together. So right here where you're at these windows, you'll notice there's training portals down below within the, the cement structure. So we do some amazing uh, tours where we're able to have all three of them over here, uh, Bolingo, Enzi, and Oliver, getting some of that reinforcement from the trainers. Now one of the last things I wanna talk about before I talk about the conservation, is the enrichment that you see out there. So there are some things that are more permanent. The hammock is a little bit more permanent along with that elbow feeder that's in the tree. And those are just things that we can fill with food, um, sort of items like browse that they're gonna have to reach up a little bit to grab. The hammock there, I don't see them laying on that out here on the habitat too much. They normally use it more like a, a serving table. They'll put all their food on there and then just eat at it. But now back behind the scenes, we do have a lot of the same features, and in there they will literally lay on that hammock. Now those barrels are items that we, of course, will put food in there, and the animals have to rotate them so that that food comes out of those holes. Very similar to like a Kong toy if you have that for your animals at home. And those are the kind of things that we rotate. Now we do have larger items like that that will leave out a little bit longer, but then smaller items like uh, Kong toys or cup feeders, those are things that you're gonna see out here on this habitat and then the very next day you come, they are gone. And that's because we go through a calendar rotating all of those different enrichment items, really, really looking at having them use not only their physical abilities, but mental as well. Many of you are probably aware, orangutans, uh, gorillas, chimpanzees are definitely tool users. So that's the reason for that termite mound right here. Uh, not that we're putting termites or ants in there, but we definitely will put spreadable sort of stuff, so like applesauce or oatmeal, peanut butter, jelly, and then they have to try to get it for the most part with their fingers, but then you can see it's a little bit deeper, so they then have to go and search for a pool and then use that. And so, uh, great interaction here, those of you that are coming up. I know it's kind of crowded in here at the moment, but that is because we have a wonderful viewing of our male gorillas out here by the windows. Bolingo is the closest to us up at the window. <laughs> Oliver is right here. Uh, oh, actually, I think, where did Oliver go? Is he over there? Uh, okay, so Oliver is over on the right side and 